Uh, hi, Sabrina. Hi. <laughs> hi. So um, you're here for the Arts Commission, correct? Yes, I am the staff person to the Arts Commission through the Office of Business Development and Tourism. Um, so they usually have a pretty uh, minor request every year. Most of this is really due to administration of the Arts Commission meetings. Um, there is a line item for Telesco, which is under other professional services, as well as um, a social media marketing individual that has been um, part-time working for the Arts Commission since its inception. Um, so that's covered in there. And then there's also some uh, business expenses that are in there when we start to hold art galleries um, again within City Hall. And it really just pays for um, whether that be hanging systems and things like that. So overall, just very basic um, general business of the Arts Commission that their budget covers. Okay, so you're operating, the other operating supplies is in uh, the other contractual service that's um, a Telesco, is that what you were referring to with the other? Yep, contractual? yep, the other contractual services, there's Telesco and then the operating supplies, that would be something like if they needed an adhesive to hang a piece of art in City Hall, that type of stuff. Uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Yes. Um, I don't know if Mr. Dakowitz or Mr. Ellis could give us an idea of where we are relative to the open items. Maybe if we know the amount of open items, I know we haven't gone through ECD yet, um, but an idea of the open items and where we are relative to the cap, I think that'll be helpful as we uh, work through the night. As well as where we are with respect to the 0.5 percent from right. all the, the departments. So we were we were going to prepare that for tomorrow night. Okay. We have a list. One list would be all the open items which are normally to be funded, and they add to the expenditures. And then we were going to have a list of the 0.5 percent contributions by departments. Okay. That would be funded. We, um, Tom sent out a memo today. To all the departments because we did not get 0.5% from all of the departments. So we we're hoping to pull that together and then tomorrow in the morning or by midday circulate that to everyone on the committee so that that would be our starting point for discussions for tomorrow. Great. That's helpful. Uh, so Sabrina. I think Jim Travers and Bill Ireland are called Harry Rilling. Now Jim Travers changed his. So, uh, because uh, Henry and I sent out uh, the links that came directly to us that appear to be the only ones that work. So, if uh, I think you can click in the upper right and uh, rename yourself if you wish. Whoever is the host of the meeting can go to the attendee list and promote everybody to panelists because I believe everybody is all staff. Steve Kleppen's in there, um, David Westmoreland is for the Historical Commission. Uh, I'll do that right now. Thanks. All right, Sabrina, are there any questions of Sabrina for the with respect to the Arts Commission budget? Uh, well, just uh, Ed, can we just start by just uh, telling us what uh, what her request was and what I mean? Where are you looking on page two under P and Z? I'm looking on page. I'm looking on page one of twelve. 12. The request was uh, oh, 65. Okay. The I'm sorry, I had. I'm sorry, I printed earlier. I'm sorry, I got it. Was 65, and uh, that's. Uh, so they're so looking the, to four percent. Uh, okay. Well, fourteen percent. Okay. All right. Um, any questions uh, beyond that? No, sir. And, right. and is uh, this? I, I guess we're not. Take, we're not going to get a half of 1% from the Art Commission. I think um, what I was told is that they're looking at a 0.5% for all of ECD. Is that correct, Sabrina? Yes, that's correct. Uh, okay. All across all of the departments, I believe right. we actually have a 0.6% decrease. Our 0.5% across all the departments was around $23,000. And we actually decreased by about $40,000 across all of our departments. Gotcha. Great. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you, Sabrina. I think we're good with the Arts Commission. No problem. Uh, Chief of ECD. 
Um, so, um, excuse me, Jess is on uh, maternity leave, so I'm kind of pinch hitting with me and my dog. Okay. So basically there appears to be no uh, difference between what was requested and what's been recommended. It's a, uh, represents a 2.3% increase from uh, 2022. Uh, are there any questions concerning that? Just um, if there's any reduction in the overall, in any particular area or? Yeah, so as Sabrina uh, just mentioned, um, everybody put in what they, uh, their nominal um, reductions, uh, but building and code enforcement had a significant reduction in their allotted part-time funds from the prior year. Oh, so with that, as when we look at our, our, our group as a whole, which is kind of lines up with the, you know, the realignment and the, and the repositioning of the city departments, that put us uh, with a reduction that was greater than the 0.5% that was requested. So what is that, uh, what is that reduction there? No, I was 40, go on, I'm sorry. Mr. Oh, no, it was from the part-time from, uh, from the prior year. Steve, maybe, maybe we should go through all the departments under economic and community development. And then when we finish, you can go through all those departments and tell us what line items are going to add up to that 0.5%. Sure, however you guys want to proceed is fine with me. Okay, so uh, shall we move to uh, uh, code enforcement? I believe that's a 1.162 uh, million request and recommended representing actually a decrease in uh, 2022 of minus 4.6%. Uh, are there any questions concerning that? No, that's good. Okay. Um, planning and zoning, uh, there's a slight increase of $30,000, uh, a 2.7% increase, um, and no difference between what was requested and what was recommended. Uh, are, there, are there any questions about that? Okay. Uh, Conservation Commission. Um, there is a uh, no, no uh, daylight between what was requested and what's been recommended. Does represent a 17.3% increase over 2022. And the bulk of that increase maybe um, we can just get some information on that with the bulk of that increases. There's a wages and salary, I think. Yeah. It's like the first item. Okay, and is, that a, is that a transfer of a, of a person? Uh, that or is a transfer. For some reason, the, um, the, the principal planner position was placed under the conservation budget. And then the one of the um, land use technicians, which had previously been under the conservation budget, was moved to planning and zoning. Okay, gotcha. So the, the and and not to not to complicate things at, at all, um, but P and Z and conservation, we had talked about merging the budgets um, for this coming budget season. But as it got close, it just it was too complicated. So it's probably something next year it should just be a single budget because we kind of share everything together. So it just makes sense. Okay. Are there any questions concerning that? So is there a corresponding, is that corresponding reduction in the P and Z to offset the 41,000 increase in Conservation Commission? Isn't that what we just said that that 41,000 increase or some of it anyway, is a result of a transfer in? Yeah, if I'm reading this correctly, there is a um, there is a reduction in the. I don't know if it's a it's apples to apples, but there is a reduction in the salaries. But they that num number I'm assuming also takes in into effect with the step step increases as well. But if I read this right, there's only a $3,700 decrease in salary in P&Z. So right. I'm just trying to track your numbers. I'm not trying to challenge you, just track the numbers. 
Right. <clears throat> there is a much larger salary decrease in code enforcement. Are we looking at the right place for transfer in, transfer out? No, that's a separate department. So that these two, the monies from those two will live mixed. Were there, more, were there more increases in in uh, the conservation commission in addition to transfer in? No. So there's there hasn't been any um, total staff increases at all. There's been. Um, after the you know the, the buyouts from a year or so ago, we had several, you know, I'd say newer staff members. So there's probably significant number of uh, step increases that jump into that equation. I'm I'm just I'm just guess yeah. I'm a little just I'm just a little confused this, unless what you're saying to me is. Is it in somehow or other in the mix that it comes out that <clears throat> the Conservation Commission is, is, is getting a bigger chunk than what was supposed to be coming out of PNZ? I'm, I'm just trying to. Con is it possible? Is it possible there was a transfer of, the, of that position that you mentioned, but there were other positions that were uh, uh, vacant and were filled, so it doesn't show the one to one correlation? Yeah, it's possible. We did I'm have asking, a vacancy right? for. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Clapton. Oh, that's okay. Go ahead. I'll... No, well, that was my question. Is that is that is that possible? Yeah, we did have a vacancy that was filled for a while. I don't recall um, how far back. It's been at least six months. So we, this is the, you know when that new hire came on. That was probably the first time we've been at full staff in well over a year. I would say. But uh, as as Alexis pointed out at the beginning, that the principal planner has always been under P and Z. And then there was a um, land use technician that was under conservation, but the two got mixed when the, the rosters went through. So at the time it was just easier to leave them alone. Be if you look at, in, I think in total between the two, the, the salaries outside of the um, you know, agreed upon union contract increases for uh, step increases, there shouldn't really be any, uh, any differences because there's no new positions added. Um, okay. So we're going to, uh, let me just understand, is, is the total, um, is the total ECD uh, what we have on page four of just under we're just over five million, five million three sixty-seven. The entire requested. ECD is, is at page four. Ends at page four. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I'm I'm still confused about, and, and I guess we'd have to get into the weeds, which is not <clears throat> what we wanted to try to do today. But I'll, I'll take your word for the fact that it's in it's in the mix someplace. Um, any other questions? Oh. No. Yep. Oh, no, okay, fair enough. So, uh, transportation. Hello, sir. Uh, Jim Travers, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. So, being my first BET budget meeting, um, how would you like me to start? I'm sorry. Well, let me just let me start by uh, saying that um, you you requested 1.596, uh, recommended is 1.513, uh, which represents a hundred thousand dollar increase over 2022, uh, which is a 7.2 percent increase. Uh, I see there's there are a number of items that were uh, uh, decreased from the prior year. Um, for other professional services, there was a sixty-three thousand dollars reduction. Uh, a couple of other reductions totaling five thousand or so. Um, and then there's an increase for wages uh, and salary, temporary sixteen thousand uh, dollars. And that really appears to be the most significant increase. 
Um, mm-hmm. Is there anything about uh, about that or anything else that you'd like for us to know? Um, so no, I think we took we took a, a hard look at uh, at the budget to come up with uh, what is uh, the 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 right number. Um, re, you know, really taking in line uh, what did we believe that we could get accomplished. Um, you know, what what did we think uh, we needed to 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 maintain? Uh, the other professional services have really offered us an opportunity to to take a, a harder look at uh, the site plan reviews. Those site plan reviews over the last year have created uh, just shy of seven hundred thousand dollars of uh, benefits to the public right away uh, through our site plan reviews, and uh, we often will use those other professional services to come up with what those uh, justifications are. Um, and the in, uh, increase in, uh, in salary uh, is, uh, is twofold here. So one is uh, taking into what, what you see in the budget is taking into consideration uh, moving a, uh, a transportation planner out of the planning department budget, uh, moving it into TMP. Uh, but if you noticed in uh, the the requested budget, there were three additional items, uh, three additional associates that we did there. Uh, one, two of them would be uh, a creation of a sign crew, which we will do uh, gladly move that one off uh, and um, uh, move it into uh, what will put a better justification forward to you in the next fiscal year. Uh, but I would make a request to return the junior engineer into the budget. Uh, if, if we look at what we have right now, uh, we have about $17 million worth of grants uh, that we have secured. Uh, most recently, uh, you, 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 may see, you may have seen the news where uh, we, uh, last year we wrote a, a CMAC grant and were awarded $3.4 million uh, for signal modifications. Uh, we uh, were just uh, awarded on um, Friday uh, through Congressman Himes $1.4 million for sidewalks uh, for West Rocks. Uh, we have uh, another, a number of other grants that are out, but we have not, as a, as a department as a whole, uh, the department has not been able to move forward with the grants that they have secured. Uh, for just for lack of resources. So we have some grants that are dated back to 2015 um, that, that we just haven't been able to move on. Uh, since my time uh, here in the last year, uh, Garrett Bolella is my assistant director, has joined me in, in this tonight's call as well, uh, that we can talk about any of the projects in detail if you, if you would like. Uh, but we're taking a really hard look at the grants that we have secured in the past, making sure that those are the investments that we want to as a city and that, uh, that, that we want to move forward with in, in, the, in line. Um, but in, you know, we have, uh, you know, last year we're awarded as a city $3 million for MLK improvements to the corridor, uh, which would require a number of investments uh, that, that would fall underneath uh, TMP uh, for execution. Uh, and uh, without additional uh, support. Uh, writing a grant, you know, as laborious as it is, it's the easy work, right? Uh, reconciling that grant and doing the, doing the construction uh, management of it uh, becomes a challenge. And, and I think we've proven that challenge, but you know, we're, we're holding you know, $17 million worth of investments in the city uh, for lack of resources in order to be able to, to accomplish those. And, you know, quite honestly, in my conversations with uh, Westcog, the Council of Governments, um, you know, being told to me is Norwalk has been underfunded in, in their grants and, and simply because it's those requests and our, our ability to get it done. So an investment into a junior engineer will not only allow us to start getting rid of, start whittling away at the, the, the existing uh, grants that we've already been awarded before they get taken away, um, but also allow us to, uh, the opportunity to, to look at more grants. And we know that more funding is available coming out of the budget that was passed from the federal government just last Thursday. So um, I, I know that we're supposed to be sitting here talking about a reduction. Um, I think, you know, uh, when, when I had a conversation with Jessica earlier, uh, and to Steve's point, uh, the, the, the reductions were not as, as taken 
from department to department, but rather the, the entire uh, economic development division uh, for, for that reduction of 0.8. Um, I, I, you know, I don't take it lightly, uh, you know, looking for additional resources, but I think the resources here would be uh, beneficial and certainly cost uh, pay for themselves. How long will it, uh, can we hold on to a grant? And it probably depends on the grant uh, before it's, uh, if it's not used before it's taken away. Um, so it, it, it's largely dependent on the, on the funder. Uh, the grants that we've had right now, I've, I've maintained a number of conversations, you know, having just joined the city a year ago, I have, you know, I have a little bit of reprieve from, uh, from Condot uh, as they, uh, you know, recognize uh, I need a little bit to, to go. We, you know, we are looking at each of them individually, making some scope changes. Uh, we are currently uh, doing that same with the Wall Street right now. Uh, you know, we have a grant for, for East Wall Street that we're, that we're holding on, um, but uh, I think you know we do have uh, local road accident reduction program grants. Uh, that program is is uh, may be phased out uh, from from DOT. Uh, so if they do phase it out uh, and we don't have it, we we do have potential to lose it. There isn't a hard cut date, which I think is okay. you're looking for. But well, let me um, ask you this question: Can the, can any of these grants or all of the grants, a uh, portion of the grants, be used to fund, albeit perhaps temporarily, until the financial picture changes on our side, uh, fund that position that you're referring to? Uh, so in future grants, uh, I could do, I may be able to do uh, you looking for construction uh, management in those, but I can't rewrite a grant that has been already awarded. I could, I could change the scope slightly of the, the work, but I can't add additional items. So I can't add uh, personnel to, the, to any of those existing grants. And what, what is the person, the person that you're referring to, an engineer? What, what type of engineer? Uh, a junior engineer. So it's a first level engineer. And what, what would that person's responsibilities do and how would that uh, help moving uh, uh, this grant money or you know, using the grant money? Uh, so they would do construction oversight. Uh, they would do project management um, of, those, uh, of those grants. So really being able to, you know, so, when, when you have a grant, there's a, a, a considerable amount of steps that have to be taken in, in order to ensure that, that, that uh, you know, we maintain the grant. Uh, but also uh, on, a week, on a monthly basis, we have to do reconciliation uh, for those grants, really making sure that we provide conduct with the necessary information. Our failure to provide them with the necessary information will, will, will result in our inability to get reimbursed for that. So it can have potential uh, impacts, but it's really about you know making sure that the grant is executed as uh, is. That's really looking at uh, you know oversight to construction. So they would be going out onto the construction field, making sure that the work is done, uh, signing off on the, the additional uh, tasks that are being done, really running uh, project management, uh, weekly project management recap with the contractor and uh, and staff, uh, and then also. Uh, Doing the paperwork for uh, monthly reconciliation back to the funder. That's uh, uh, for my math. That's about eighty-three thousand uh, dollars all in for a junior engineer. Uh, for their base salary, yes. Not not the benefits or anything. Like not that. Be not benefits, no. Because that's the difference I see between what was requested and what was, at least in wages and salaries, what was requested and what was recommended. unless there's another place where that monies would come from. So um, I could- Ed, 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 you're looking that, at the Does that take into right, account Ed. the transportation planner's salary um, that's being transitioned over from uh, planning and zoning to TMP? I see. Yeah, there's a $63,000 reduction uh, 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 of other professional services, actually. Uh, no, this would have been a salary line. Item. Okay. Well, or, or you know, I'm sorry. Let me just. I, I think we're getting a little confused here. You're telling me that that uh, 1.169, which results in an increase of 148,000, is oh. partially due to um, somebody coming in from a planner from PNZ? 
So, so the transportation planner was under PNZ. Okay. Before the transportation planner, it, it is moving to the transportation department. Okay, but is, is that then I should see a corresponding reduction in P and Z right. once again. So now I've got two people coming out of P and Z, one going into conservation commission, and 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 yet I still Chris. see only a decrease of about thirty seven hundred dollars in P and Z. So, well, it's possible the P and Z budget didn't have that position taken out because it wasn't set in stone when the budget was put together. But then I should see a, a, a bigger bigger reduction year over year, right? Right, if, if the PNZ budget, if the PNZ budget has that position taken out, then the PNZ budget uh, is lower by the amount of uh, the transportation salary that goes into- the But it wouldn't budget. have been taken out of the 22 budget, would it? No, it didn't get taken out because it hasn't uh, happened. But that's what I'm saying is that we're only showing between the 22 and the 23 budget in P and Z, you're showing a reduction of $3,000, $4,000. Now, um, so somebody went into, into Conservation Commission, somebody goes into, somebody else goes into TMP, and that's two heads. It certainly wasn't $3,700 or $4,000. I, the numbers are just not adding up here. Yeah, we, or, we, or the explanation you're giving me is 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 maybe not quite what you really mean. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with Jim, uh, Jim this Troy. Um, this is the second time we're hearing this. We need help from Tom or Henry on, on these offsets. I mean, I you can't just say it's transferred from another department unless we see the offset. I mean, uh. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't see it. I see, like Jim said, I'm seeing you, you're up 148,000 on your wages and, and you're telling us, uh, I'm not sure what you're telling us. You're telling us this is an added person for the grants or it's a transfer from another department. It's, this is a little confusing to me. Um, uh, how many salaries with that line represent? How many people would that line represent? The head count. Yeah. Because um, there are a number of wages, there's a wage overtime and then there's a wage salary premium, but that's zero, so. And then you have the temporary, the 16,000, the temporary line. The temporary is uh, an intern. So it would be nine plus an intern. Or uh, moving away wait, in the, with the transportation planner included be 10 plus the intern, but not the junior engineer. And you're saying that the junior engineer would be at least a hundred thousand dollars. I think there's, I think the difference is $83,000 uh, in the, in, be, between the requested and the recommended. Recommended. Yeah. That's the difference. But you said that that's just base salary, not, not benefits as well. Correct. So you would still not have enough to pay that person. Uh, were there to be an increase of $83,000. If the benefits are not included, yeah. I think, I think the only item included there was the base salary. Okay. Um, how close are you to being able to secure additional uh, grants that might either partially or entirely pay for that engineer at least for a year or two or something until we can figure out uh, whether or not we can absorb that on our, you know, on the city side. Um, so the the only other grant that's looking, uh, you know, that, that that that's looking possibly upon funding is a, a lots of grant uh, looking uh, for for phase two, uh, but that uh, they that one does not allow staff to be included in uh, the budget. Uh, Jim, quickly, it, it, when you get these grants. And you say you can't execute them. Is it a skill set issue or is it a volume issue? It's a volume. It's a manpower issue. So, I mean, it would make sense if we, I mean, if we have the right manpower, you could unlock, it sounds like, how much in grants that we have sitting around? We have $17 million in grants. And what you're saying is that one position, a junior engineer, would 
unlock would would make it possible for some of these to be for some of these uh, grants to be used it seems like it seems like uh you know a, a relatively minor position to to have that you know to have that or, or can you bring in a temporary person i mean to pay somebody a hundred thousand to get 17 million i mean that's a no-brainer in my opinion it, 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 and, and would be in mind too I, and, and i think you know the the issue is um the you know to, to talk about a, a temporary position you know the, the you know we're not going to get 17 million dollars worth of grants reconciled in one year from one individual it's just not physically possible right so so this is you know this would be a multi-year investment um but we're also saying that in that multi-year investment this is this is really beginning uh, you know, of, of a process of really looking for for external services uh, to 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 our external sources. You know, there's no no indication that the grants are going away. There's only an indication that there's that, that there's becoming further you know money that that's going to be available. You know, um, you know, it for from 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 my history, my most recent history. You know, as I headed the bureau in Stanford, right in the four years that I, that I was under a contract with, with them. Uh, I wrote $55 million worth of grant requests and received $47 million worth of funding. Um, you know, it, you know, it's, it's laborious and it's hard work, right? But you also have to, you know, the, you, when you deliver results, you have a, a, the ability to get more grants, right? Uh, I think we're stalled with, with really being able to get grants because we're sitting with grants that, that aren't, that haven't moved, right? And, you know, right now we're really looking at, you know, you know, this the, you know this federal information uh, administration really looking to try to get work completed right shovel ready projects which is really uh, you know was uh, the conversation we had with Congressman Hines's office about sidewalks on West Rocks Avenue right and um, you know really can we can, you know they they want to see the projects and they want to see the projects done and when they're not done they they do get stalled uh, and you just don't get it the next round of, of grants uh, available but we, you know, we certainly one? have a number. May I ask you this question: Are there uh, junior engineers or engineers in other departments that can be shared? Uh, you know, like let's say in public works or in you know, uh, you know, in building or something. I don't know. Is, is that something that can be done uh, to bridge the gap a little bit? So I, I I really think that you know when we look at at seventeen million, this is more than a full time position. So when we talk about sharing. We're really talking about that fact that you know one person wouldn't even um, you know I, look I didn't approach a, a budget to you with adding three people I thought that was unrealistic right um, I wanted to to get something to prove to you that we could actually get the work done uh, and that you could see a value in it um, we you know we do meet with DPW on a regular basis we have you know two meetings a week with with, with them and I can tell you that they're equally uh, your know, resource challenge. Uh, in 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 order to to get the these jobs done, you know, currently right now with the very small department, you know, we are um, you know we have a, a you know a three million dollar grant that's underway for signal modernization for what we're calling phase three. Uh, we also have uh, you know another grant for uh, you know improvements and uh, you know issues related to the Webster lot that we're looking uh, to correct. Um, you know and you know, besides that, we also have, you know, city funded projects where we are uh, doing our safe routes to school and currently, uh, you know, going out to bid for the work this summer, which will be, you know, over a mile of sidewalks on, on Highland, right? So we're trying to balance, you know, the commitment that uh, we've made from a city, uh, from, a, from a capital funding standpoint, uh, to also what we have, uh, you know, grant funded uh, for, um, you know a variety of different sources you know that grant fund too we are also going out to you know, we're making some uh modifications to a to a grant that was awarded to us in 2016 uh that's going to be improvements to wall street and you know uh, we are doing a lot of uh, outreach to the community about those changes to to that grant but we've secured that grant uh and we'll be back out to bid this year so that will be in you know this fall we'll be in construction with yet uh you know another one of those so you know, on a sharing, I, I understand, and I don't don't want to be like no, you know negative in, in this, but um, I just don't see as ability to share based on the volume of work that and the commitment needed to make them happen. 
Well, I, 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 this Troy again. I, listen, I mean, I I know I recognize this is your first. You know, you're getting your first year here, and I appreciate it. And I, I I know you're trying to figure it out. But if you're nine people and the intern can't do this work to unle unlock the 17 million, I think you guys have to sit down and somebody has to do a cost benefit analysis because this this is one line item that I have. I think that we need to increase in order to unlock. I mean, I, I don't. It seems like. I don't know what we're why it's we're, especially especially problematic because I imagine that the cost of these projects five years ago is not the exactly. cost of now. Yes. So, so you're actually losing uh, funding, if you will, without it being taken away. Right. We we in some instances aren't able to get the magnitude of the project completed uh, based on on the on the you know, rise of cost of materials. Yes. Uh, how, how many uh, how many grants have we lost this past year? Because we haven't we haven't lost any. We haven't okay. lost any. We haven't so, lost any. Yeah. So you know, d d this how last many year, we how, many, how many dollars did we have last year? It's still the same dollars, right? So I think what we're, what uh, what what uh, I was trying to say is, you know, the cost of materials go up. So when we had anticipated, you know, that we, you know, when when we applied for a grant. And that grant was $2 million and we were going to get 12 widgets, right? Um, we might only be getting 10 widgets now, right? So we scale back the, the, the level of the project to, uh, to meet the new requirements of the, of the funding avail the available funding. If that clears it up, though. If not, I can give you a different example. No, that makes sense. All right, well, uh, is the mayor still on? The mayor is on. Hey, Mr. Mayor, you've been very silent. So- uh, Just listening. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, uh, I'm not sure what the consensus is, but uh, should this, uh, might this be uh, an open item? It's a fairly significant open item, uh, open item if, it, if, it, if, it, if we decided to uh, make it that, but um, I'm just wondering, you know, you know what the city's thinking is or what you're thinking is on that yeah you know it makes a lot of sense i know jim and uh, garrett have been uh, aggressive in uh trying to uh right some of the wrongs that uh, we weren't able to take care of in the past so uh the only thing i caution is we have to be very careful about the open items uh, we do have some money to play with uh if people come in at 0.5 percent or um, more uh, below their uh, requested budget. So uh, I think we can leave it as an open item and discuss it. And could I add to that too, uh, Ed, is that yeah. I would like to get an explanation of these transfers between de departments that uh, to some yes. extent reconcile these, these increases that we're looking at. Because um, I, I just have a very queasy feeling in my stomach about that. I second that. And uh, and and rather than go through them now, as I think uh, Henry suggested, um, uh, perhaps you, you know I think you indicated at the start that you have about uh, forty thousand in uh, cuts, uh, which represents that more than the 0.5 percent that was requested. If you can just give those to Henry at the end, or not at the end, but tomorrow, uh, so that when we uh, get together and meet to discuss. Uh, the open items, um, we can have that information or he can have that information to plug into the numbers. Sure, I, I can email Henry tomorrow morning. Okay. Well, my understanding from Jessica's email was that the code enforcement department had uh, in total a $56,000 decrease built into the recommendation. Um, but my understanding of what the mayor's directive was, was not to point to something in the recommendations. It's to say, based on what you've come in with, based on what the, be, uh, the council set a cap on, we're looking for that additional 40,000. We've had many departments that had cuts. Uh, Mickey and the police came in pretty flat with no increases. Obviously, just the just to fund the increases or staff increases annually, they had to make other cuts. So the fact that that came in at 56,000 versus um, the beginning of the process, 
I don't think satisfies the mayor's uh, direction. On uh, mayor, maybe I'm wrong and I I misinterpret it. Well, as long as the total amount for the uh, economic and community development, including TMP and business and tourism, as long as the amount totals 0.5% or greater that the reduction is there, uh, I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure that uh, they understand that. Everybody understands that. They, but would this be a reduction over 2022 or, or a reduction over what they was originally recommended? What they originally were recommended? Yes. Hmm. It, it should be pointed out too that they're, you know, and I can't speak for all the different groups, but I know at least on our end, you know, there, there's additional responsibilities that we've been tasked to do that have come, come down from council with different committees that have been formed and somebody has to staff those and not everybody uh, that staffs those is, is in the, the same union as like, like, like myself. I show up to a meeting, I, it's the same pay, whether I stay three hours, four hours, five hours, but other folks that staff these, you know, due to um, the way the contracts are structured, they have to go to the meetings and attend. And, you know, there's the overtime requirements and it's additional hours that we hadn't anticipated six months to a, a, you know, a year ago, but, you know, that's fine. The, the work is all good and important, but we do have to, you know, account for those hours. Well, it, we also have to take into consideration that creating extra committees adds an extra dimension of cost to us. And we have to look at that very closely. We just can't say, okay, let's create a committee for this. Let's create a committee for that, another committee for this, and expect that staff is going to be there the entire time. There's just not the funding for it, and they have to understand that. Yep. All right, well, uh, so we'll leave that as an open item, uh, that junior engineer position uh, for now. I think, that, I'm not sure where we are with the 0.5%, if that's been satisfied or not, uh, but I'll let, you guys work that out, I guess. Um, shall we move uh, to business development and tourism, or is everyone is everyone set to move on? Or are we? Uh, uh, I've got a I've got a question on business uh, development and tourism. Mm -hmm. um, is the area of uh, well that there was hold on it was not wages and salaries it was uh, professional services, one hundred and fourteen percent increase. Sure. So we had um, a partial contract in there from the previous year as we had started the contract in December. So we only paid um, this current fiscal year $70,000 for that contract, which is partially what that contract was. But the full year is actually consuming a capital budget item and moving that over to an operating budget because we have an outstanding contract for five years going forward. And what is the contract for? It's uh, the Visit Norwalk contract for the marketing services. So they're handling all of Visit Norwalk, all of the economic and community development website building that we're doing. And they're also going to be consuming um, some of the Arts Commission social media as well. Um, so you'll see, if you were to compare my operating budget and the uh, capital budget, you'll see a complete removal of that line item from the capital budget as it's moved over to the operating budget. Okay. All right, it makes sense. Okay, thank you. Yep. And then I can also speak to the other increase in salary that a position is a permit coordinator, a part, a portion of the ARP funding that the city received will be to uh, create an online permitting and licensing system. That permit coordinator will not only coordinate that transition, but will also be a customer service facing individual that will help individual that will help individual businesses as well as residents for residential permits um, and walk them through the process of what they need um, and what forms they need to fill out and all of that stuff while also assisting us fully online all of our permitting and licensing in the city. Sabrina, I have just a quick question. You said that that was taken out of the capital budget and put it into the operating budget. Is that a long-term contract? Yeah, we have a five-year option on that contract. So we'll, we're already two years in on that. So we'll have another three years. So this current year and then two more years following that before we'll either go back out to RFP um, or um, do a sole source procurement for the same. And it's 150 a year? Yep, $100,000 for the Visit Norwalk contract. 
which is all of our tourism activities and another $50,000, which covers the economic and community development departments as a whole. So it's kind of like our, our business arm, like our attraction website. Um, so it covers all of that and specific marketing to businesses and drawing them to the city rather than just promoting to visitors. Right. So, so Henry, we don't capitalize those long-term contracts? Um, I don't recall the shift. Um, I don't understand why that was shifted. And I, I don't understand. It's a significant expense. I don't know. It's an annual expense. I don't understand how you enter into a contract for an annual amount that's greater than what your budget was. Because I I was I was requested to move this from capital to operating. That's the only reason it's in here. So I'm glad you said that, Henry, because I'm confused too. Well, it was um. There was 150,000 requested, 150 recommended, representing that 80, that 80,000, I guess, and then there was another. I should I should mention that the contract is not. It's for a total of five years, but it's based on approval on a year to year basis. Does that help? So if we were to not get funding one year, we have the option to discontinue the contract. So it's based on it's it's conditioned it's upon review. funding for it. Okay. Yep. It's a yearly review. So every single year I go back to uh, the economic development community, economic and community development committee to forward to the council to get council approval approval to extend that contract the additional year. Okay. So it's an sorry. annual contract. Yeah, it's an annual contract, but we have five year options. We have five. So it's different. Five That's different options. than a five year contract. Yes. Five year contract ties us in for five years. No, nope. right, an option to renew it in subsequent years is an annual contract. Correct. We have an annual contract with five one year extensions, and we've already utilized two of those. And it, and it had been capitalized at one time? Yep. Previous to this current budget, um, previous to this year and this current budget request, the first year of the contract, it was a capital expense. And who instructed you to move it? Where did you get the guidance to move it to operating? Who'd you get that, that was, from? That came down from chief discussions. I was told uh, by our chief to move it into operating. So it was funded under the capital budget the, the first time around? The first year it was funded by capital budget. This year it's you'll see half is that $70,000 because the contract started later in. So last year is actually kind of when it moved. Okay. So, so funding, okay, so Henry, you went out and bonded this item? I mean, what? I, I just can't understand a one-year contract with four-year renewals was put into a capital budget. That doesn't make sense to me. The one year and if it was put in the capital budget, an wouldn't it? operating expense. And, what, and wouldn't it have been bonded, uh, Henry? We don't. Bonding is based on cash flow. Okay, not necessarily by the approval of the capital projects. But if it was approved, then it's part of what we borrowed. But as you know, we have $220 million of projects right. that were not bonded. So the ones that are being spent currently are the ones that we fund uh, year by year. So if this, if this was a capital project, then quarterly, they're supposed to project when they're going to spend the money. And that's how we base our budgeting. I don't understand why we would borrow 15-year money to finance an annual advertising or marketing uh, expense. Henry, I think that's why this item was moved to operating. I think that was the guidance you had given uh, Jessica to move it over. Okay. So, so it's it's correct now. Is that right, Henry? Yeah. So the capital account is completely closed. We're now only have been using operating for these past few months, and we will only be using operating moving forward. Okay. So it was placed in the wrong place last year, and now it's in the right place. Correct. Okay. So we can move on. Okay. All right. Uh, so basically, that was uh, it was recommended um, that as well as the other uh, position. So 
Um, are there any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Sabrina. Uh, uh, Historical Commission. Don't know if uh, David Westmoreland on. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Okay. It was. So basically, there's no real right. increase. Uh, no real increase over 2022. It's you know 0.0. I mean, a 0.2 percent increase. Uh, Six hundred dollar increase. Are there any questions concerning that? No. Okay. No. There being no questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Westmoreland. Thank you. I forget, that was easy, David. <laughs> Excellent. Um, administration. Uh, yeah, police department. Oh, yes, police department. Yes, thank you. That's right. Okay, well, so we're done with uh, economic development. Um, we have one open item, and I guess we have, there's an issue, an open issue as to what the 0.5% uh, decrease looks like. Um, so I guess we'll get answers to uh, to that for those tomorrow. And, and also clarity on the puts and takes on yeah, positions that's right. moving. Right. So if we can get that for tomorrow, that'd be great. Uh, police department, um, administration, uh, there's a $13,000 increase over, well, I mean, let's just say overall, there's just a 2.2% increase, I believe, in the police department's uh, budget uh, from uh, 2022, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, 2.2% 2 .2 over 2022, uh, um, which was uh, 27 uh, million, and, uh, and that 2.2% uh, represents an increase of $605,000 over 2022. Are there any questions concerning the police budget? Is there, uh, yeah, I, I was just on some of the um, the increases on the on the um, on wages. Um, does any of that represent? Is is that all just contract, or is is any of that represent um, headcount increases? The majority of it is uh, raises, you know, contractual uh, increases. There is one refunding of a position that was cut last year, which is the uh, maintenance position. And that was refunded in this budget. Okay. So that, that one is just to replace somebody that was cut last year. Correct. Okay, good. That was a question I did have. But overall head count, head counts pretty much the same as year over year? Yes, aside from that one position. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. Well, we also had other cuts of civilian personnel last year, which were not replaced. All right. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the email that we got from Tom uh, regarding the 0.5%. And I'm very sensitive to the police budget. Um, but the uh, what we have from Tom is that fire operations public works recs and park uh, finance department and planning and zoning have all come in with a 0.5%. Um, having said that, I'm very, uh, you know, we're all uh, appreciative that the police budget has come in at only 2.2% over. I'm not sure, um, you know, how uh, the mayor feels about the 0.5% request for uh, for public safety, um, for a public safety department, but that I, I don't see that the police department has come in uh, with a recommended amount. Um, and I don't know that this is something that we uh, want to ask of the police department that's above our pay grade. They, they came in with a very lean budget. I can't see any place where they have the ability to cut. So, uh, uh, they, you know, I, I just believe they're fine, so I'm good with that. Okay. And, and uh, just in their defense, uh, the way we had phrased this, we were asking people to be prepared at their the review meetings with the BET with a half percent. So 
I didn't mean to imply that they were delinquent. <laughs> no, no, I, I didn't. I certainly didn't take it that way. But um, uh, okay, uh, are there any questions? Nope. No. Nope. Okay. Well, concludes this evening. Um, so there's one open item from this evening, I guess. Thank you. Uh, and we'll meet again tomorrow. What time? Six. Uh, um, same uh, bat time. Same bat channel. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Have a nice evening. Thank yeah. You. Thank you.